What are some of the key factors for a successful marriage of 52 years? Well, there's many. Uh, first off, the Bible says that the husband is to give himself as Jesus gave himself for the church. And we, we need to be a partnership. And the man gives himself, but the woman is supposed to submit to the husband too. He is supposed to be the head and, and the leader and the, the caretaker. So when you, what about the practical part? Well, that's life, living life. Okay. Well, I believe that um, a woman needs to do what the Bible says, and she is to submit to her husband. And um, it's a lot easier to submit to a husband that is living for God and that has godly principles and godly values and integrity because then you know that you're submitting to something that's gonna protect you. And um, if your husband isn't there yet, you need to pray for him because the Bible says that a praying wife can win her husband over and you don't win your husband over by nagging at him or pointing out all of his bad points. I've always some um, thought of, you know, there's only one or two good things and there's a lot of negative things that you focus on the positive things and a woman has the power through Jesus Christ to build up her man to make him feel loved and feel wanted and we're sub to submit to the needs of a husband and um, in any way and to have fun don't forget to have fun and make your marriage fun and I um, always like to tell people that you need to live on a honeymoon and it might not be a honeymoon all the time, but you can make it that. And if you get upset with each other, um, you need to settle it as quickly as you can, but don't settle it when you're upset. But women, you know how what your man likes and how to treat him and how to get to his heart. And that's what you need to do. And women are supposed to be a treasure. Yes. And it's, up to, it's their duty to make sure they are that treasure. And if the husband treats the wife the way he's supposed to, according to the word, she will feel like a treasure to him. How did you know that she was the one? Why? That's just something that happened. You know, we we had met each other, but uh, after the after the first kiss, that was it. It was all over. It wasn't no, nothing else and nobody else ever. Which one of you made the first move? Well, I guess I kissed her first. And, and like I said, that's all it took. That was it. Pastor Casey, what do you love most about Pastor Cheryl? Man, that's hard to decide. We've been together forever. You know, the, the most we've enjoyed life together, had the same interests of being in the country and just basically sharing life, always. Hmm. My soulmate, my partner, partner in business and in life. Huh. Always, always being there. Yeah, that's besides ministry. Uh -huh. Our personal lives are together, always. And, hmm, man, everything about her, man. A good cook, homemaker, taking care of me. What do you think? Everything. Yeah. And what I love the most about KC is that I don't have to guess what he's going to do or how he's going to be because he's steady, he's faithful, he's loyal, he's a real man of God. He's I'm simple. I'm a simple man. Yeah, simple, but deep at the same time when he has something to say, it's always something that's um, very wise. And um, I love it that he's handsome. You're cute. <laughs> You're still cute. Yeah, well, we gotta work at that. My mom always said that men are born beautiful, but us women have to work at it. But the most important thing is having a, a beautiful soul and um, Anyway, I like the most about him is that he loves me and I know 
that he loves me. And one thing I said to him years ago that's always stuck with me that I think more people need to realize um, really in life, not just their marriage, but I said to him one day that I said, you just take me for granted. And um, he said to me something that shocked me. He said, well, he said, I want you to take me for granted. I want you to know that I'm always going to be there, that I'm going to work and support our family, and I'm always going to be there for you. So that really changed a lot of things for me. But anyway, I admire most of all that he is a man of God and that we do have a wonderful life together. And yeah, there's times when we have disagreements, but we always work them out. And he knows how to work them out with me, and I know how to work them out with him. But um, just in always being thankful and grateful, and especially through rough times, I think so many couples give up way too easy and um, not realizing the covenant they have. And there may be really rough times in your life, but stay committed to that covenant and trust God, and he will work it out, and he will make things beautiful and I tell people all the time that when God restores your marriage that it can be better than it's ever been so um, so many people give up and they separate from the people that God did intend them to be with so go the long haul I mean there are reasons to divorce but usually most of the reasons if people would have just stuck it out they could have had a beautiful life together so and have fun together Mm-hmm. And him and I do that. We, yeah, we every do. aspect. Of I know all of his tickle spots, and I <laughs> get to him often, <laughs> and I catch him off guard. And make that's me weak. yeah, I do. I know how to make him weak, <laughs> and he's he's strong. Give us a couple of romantic highlights from you guys' life. Well, for me. Um, Casey isn't the type of guy to go out and get flowers and candies and all of that, you know, kind of thing that a lot of women expect from their husbands and they'll maybe get upset because he doesn't do that. But I know his heart and for all of our special occasions, one thing that he's always done, which means the most to me and is very romantic, is he always gets me a card and the cards that he gets me are like written from his heart, even though he doesn't handwrite them necessarily. But when he signs it, he always signs it like forever yours or I love you forever and those kinds of things I know that he means. And yeah. it's always very special to me. And I've kept um, all of the cards that he has given me and they mean the world to me. And as far as our life goes, the most romantic thing in our life is our whole life because we have had a dream together ever since we got married and talked about it even before we were married. And on our honeymoon, we went to my grandmother's down in the hills of Virginia. And um, I found out more about him. He found out more about me and my grandmother and the roots that I loved. and. So it's been a lifelong dream for him and I to live in the woods. I told him two things I wanted when I got married was to be able to live in the woods and to have a wood-burning cook stove because my grandmother cooked on a wood-burning cook stove and I loved her lifestyle um, down in the mountains of Virginia. And we've created that. It's been a long time coming, but we stuck with our dreams and we did it together. And it took a long time, but the last... uh, Three, well, it took about three years of um, constant commitment once we started building it, but we've had a constant commitment all of our life to build that dream together. And when you love God and serve God, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And if you're diligently seeking him, then you're gonna do things right in your marriage and raising your family and all of the mistakes with, you know, that you think you might make in your marriage or with your kids. Jesus Christ bridges all of those gaps and he makes everything new in his timing. Good, yes. So from the beginning of our lives as young people, we had 
dreams of our own that came together and we have lived those dreams. God will give you dreams and you can accomplish them, but you just have to stay on track. But everything from our, our youth to coming together and what we've done as adults has always pointed and fulfilled dreams that we've had and shared together. Great things. And we desired things for our children. And that's why we chose to live where we did because we wanted to raise our family um, out in the woods and just, you know, give them a life of freedom and to, but at the same time, protect them from things, you know, of the world and to train and teach them, you know, things of God. And also we've always had a desire together to help people um, and to um, let them know Jesus Christ and for them to have, you know, a good life. And so we've always desired that. And then when God placed it in our heart um, about 18 or 19 years ago to start a church, it was easy um, for us to follow after that dream because we too wanted to always put God first place in our life. And we went through some troubled times in our marriage and it looked at one time that it wasn't gonna last, but because of prayers of my mom and dad and our willingness to work things out, um, God has made everything new and I wouldn't change much at all about my life. And I'm so thankful for um, KC. What could we change? Right. Well, we're here. We that's enjoy right. life. That's right. <laughs>